Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, Jennifer, could you hear me? All right, let's get started. All right, so uh, welcome to the, the last week of the semester. Uh, the plan here is to cover sections 8.2, 8.3. Now, Uh, one thing you'll notice is I haven't posted a, a lecture video in uh, the, uh, the week 15 ePortfolio. Uh, that's because there's no new information this week. Uh, I have videos posted for the Excel problems that I've worked through. Uh, and I've posted my PowerPoint notes. Uh, but basically, these two sections, 8.2 and 8.3, um, are sort of just applications of what we covered last week. So every single step in every single problem in these two sections is something we've already done last week. Um, and this week we sort of just put everything together and state the final conclusion of the hypothesis test. Uh, now a couple of things I wanna mention So on my math lab, you'll see uh, there are two, two homework assignments for this week. Uh, I didn't post the videos on my math lab, but they're posted on my ePortfolio. So of course, you could, as always, you could access them there. Um, I decided not to have a chapter eight quiz since we're just doing chapter eight now and we're about to take an exam on that. So I don't think we need a quiz and an exam you know, back to back. And when you, when you look at your grade book on my math lab, you'll see that uh, the lowest quiz grade has been dropped. So I mentioned a couple of weeks ago that I'd be dropping the lowest quiz grade. So that should now be reflected in your, uh, in your my math lab grade book. So before, uh, before we uh, work through a problem or so. Uh, are there any questions at all from 8.1? Because basically, whether or not this week is going to be difficult depends entirely on how you feel about last week's material. Because this week is basically going to be a well, sort of redoing what we did last week. So any questions from 8.1? Okay, so let's look at a hypothesis test problem. Now, you know, before we do this problem, one thing I want to mention is that 
you know, obviously you're going to see problems like this on the exam, multiple problems like this on the exam. And when you see them on the exam, they're going to be more difficult than when you see them in the homework. <coughs> Excuse me. Not that the problem themselves are going to be more difficult, but you know, exactly like I mentioned for the last exam, uh, when you're doing the homework, you know what section it's coming from. So when you're doing the 8.2 homework, you know every one of those problems is about the proportion. So you don't have to worry about deciding what type of problem it is. And when you do the 8.3 homework, every problem you know is about the mean because 8.3 is about mean. Uh, now, when you see these on the exam, you won't know if it's a hypothesis test coming from section 8.2 or 8.3. So you'll have to be able to, de to determine if it's a proportion hypothesis test or if it's a mean hypothesis test. So if you see, if you see information or data given about a percentage, remember percentage and proportion, those two terms are, are interchangeable. So if you see percentage, that is the indication that it's a problem about the proportion. Okay, so I have sort of on the left here, I have this everything laid out in terms of the order that you do things uh, when you're going through a hypothesis test. So let's look at this one. Based on the information from the National Cybersecurity Alliance, 93% of computer owners uh, believe they have antivirus software on their computer. But in a random sample of 400 computers, it's found that 380 of them actually have antivirus uh, software. Using that sample data, test the claim with 0 0.05 significance that 93% of computers have antivirus software. Okay. So we're starting with this, identifying the claim that we're, that we're testing. So test the claim with 0 0.05 significance that 93% of computers have antivirus software. So this is the claim that we are testing. The proportion of all computers with antivirus software is 93% or 0 point, not three. 0 0.93. Okay, so that's the claim that we're testing. That's the first thing you do. Hopefully all of this is looking familiar because this is also what we did last week. Once you have your claim, that allows you to set up your null and alternate hypotheses. Null hypothesis is always a statement of equality. So, Again, P equals 0 0.93 would be your null hypothesis. And in this case, your alternate hypothesis would be P is not equal to 0 0.93. Remember, you're, you're, you have only one option for the null hypothesis. That's an equal sign. You have three options for your alternate hypothesis. It could be less than, greater than or not equal to. Those are your three options for your alternate. Looking at the problem, there's no mention of inequalities. There's no, you don't see words like more than, less than, at least, at most, greater than, less than. Uh, so there's, there's no mention of an inequality there. So we're gonna use not equal to <laughs> for the alternate hypothesis. And now the alternate hypothesis, so basically you, you start with the claim that 
then lead you to the two hypotheses. Once you have your alternate hypothesis, that tells you what kind of test it is. Right tail, left tail, or two tail. In this case, since the, the symbol used in the alternate hypothesis is not equal to, it's a two-tailed test. So the critical region that's split halfway between the two tails. Okay, so now back to the problem. Let's see, 93% of computer owners believe they have antivirus software installed. Okay, in a random sample, a random sample of 400 scanned computers. Okay, that's N, so our sample size is 400. It is found that 380 of them actually have the antivirus software program. That's the number of successes. That's X. So we could go over here. So I'm using yellow for cells where I have to manually type the number in that's given in the problem. And blue is the cells that work. Cell's gonna do something for me. So X is 380, N is 400. <clears throat> okay, so our sample proportion, P hat, is equal to X over N. So that should be equal to uh, this cell here, which is B13 divided by cell B14. So that's equal X over N. Okay, so our sample proportion is 95%. So our sample proportion is not equal to 93%, which leads us to believe that maybe we might be rejecting the null hypothesis. The population proportion that we're assuming that's given in the problem, that's 0 0.93. And Q, is equal to one minus P. So we could say one minus P, which is right here in cell B16. And the significance that's given in the problem, that's 0 0.2. Zero 0.5, so this is alpha, 0 0.05 significance. Remember alpha, alpha is your significance. So that alpha, that's the area of your critical region. So this area of the left tail, that would be half of alpha. So half of 5% is 2.5% or half of 0 0.05 is 0 0.025. And now we need these critical values. Now, uh, the graph is symmetric. So those two critical values, they're going to be the same number, just one positive and one negative. Okay, so we use the, the same <coughs> normal distribution Excel functions that we've been using since section 6.1.
So to find a z-score, if you know the area to the left of that z-score, it's norm.s.inv. And so we could find either one. If we know alpha, the area of those two tails is 0 0.05, then we know the area between them is 0 0.95. So if we wanted to find, let's say, I mean, we could find either one, but if we wanted to find, let's say this critical value here, well, the area to the left of this critical value would be 0 0.9. Seven five because you have the nine the, the ninety five in the middle, and the other two and a half on the left. So that's a total of 0.975. Okay, so our critical values equal norm dot s dot inv and probability means area to the left. So we could use zero point nine. Seven five. Okay, so now we know our critical values plus and minus. One point nine six. How are we doing so far? Does anyone have any questions? Yes, I have a question. Um, why is it 0 0.95? The, um, like the confidence um, is like, is that in the problem? Cause I see no, that- No, 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 there's no, there's, there's no mention of confidence here. Oh, so like where did the, did the 0 0.95 come from? So that red area on the right and the left, mm -hmm. that's alpha, that's 0 0.05. Oh, so we assume the 0 0.85 from, from that information that's given? Yes, because you know the whole area um, is one. So if 0 0.05 is already taken care of with the with the critical region, the leftover is the 0.95. Oh, okay. So, yeah, that so, makes sense. So just because we use this graph with confidence intervals and you saw 0.95 with confidence intervals, that 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 doesn't mean it we're still using confidence intervals here. This is a, a separate topic. Oh, but okay. We use, this, we use the same graph. We use use the same normal distribution throughout chapters six, seven, and eight. Okay, I was confused. Thank you. You're welcome. So now, now the question becomes, what do we do with the null hypothesis? Uh oh, what happened? Hang on, it looks like Excel is not responding. Oh. Okay, there it goes. Okay, so now after you have your critical values, now the question is at this point, do we reject the null hypothesis, yes or no? <clears throat> and to answer that question, we need the test statistic and or the p-value. So the test statistic and the p-value, that's coming from the specific sample data for this problem. Okay, so our test statistic is equal to 
the difference between sample and population proportions divided by the standard error, which is P times Q over N square root. And so that's for, for the proportion, that's our test statistic. And I'll use parentheses in the numerator, just so Excel does the things in the order that we want it to do. So our test statistic, we could say equal to P hat, which is right here, B15, minus P, which is right here, B16. Okay, so that's the numerator. And then we wanna divide that by the square root, SQRT, <coughs> the square root of P times Q divided by N. So we have P, Q, P hat, and N in this formula, and we have those four values above. So this test statistic represents our sample data. And in this case, our test statistic is maybe about right here. 1.568. So because our test statistic does not fall within the critical region, that tells us we fail to reject the null hypothesis. And this is the, so this is what we, what we call the traditional method of a hypothesis test. Finding the test statistic, which is a z-score and comparing it to the critical value, which is a z-score. So the, the traditional method is you compare these two z-scores. There's also the p-value method where you compare the p-value to alpha. And so the p-value method, if the p-value is greater than alpha, you fail to reject the null hypothesis. If the p-value is less than alpha, then you reject the null hypothesis. So this is the p-value method. And in this case, to find the p-value, p-value is an area, because alpha is an area, p-value is an area. With the p-value method, you're comparing two areas. <coughs> and so for our p-value, we need this area here, the area outside the test statistic.
So let's see. Okay, so for that area, we're gonna use equal to one minus because Excel could give us area to the left. We want area to the right. So this is where we use the complement one minus norm dot s dot d i s t. We're using this function. So that's if we know a z score and we want the area, it's norm dot s dot dist. So for our p value, <laughs> so down here on the bottom left for the p-value, that's going to be equal to twice that area. So we have to find that area outside the test statistic and double it. You don't always double it. You only double it when it's a two-tailed hypothesis test. So just like I did last week, I have a separate sheet on this Excel file called charts. If you click on that. Get rid of this stuff. Okay, so let me get rid of my editing. So this is the this is the same sort of place where I just included all the visual aids that we use during this hypothesis test. So just like last week, this is a, you know, this is a, a, a sheet that you'll, you'll want to reference while you're doing the homework and while you're taking the test. And so you don't have to memorize this stuff. You don't have to memorize when to double the area for the p-value and when not to. You just have to be able to go to this little flow chart on how to find the p-value. So question one, what type of test is it? Is it right tail, left tail, or two tail? In this case, we're doing a two tail test. So that puts you right here. Then the next question is, is the test statistic to the right or the left of center? Well, our test statistic was positive, so it's to the right of center. So that puts us down here. So that tells us the P value is equal to twice the area to the right of the test statistic. So you'll see with the, with the right tail test or left tail test, the p-value is just equal to the area outside the test statistic for a two tail test, you have to double it. So down here on the bottom left for the p-value, that should be equal to two times so we want to two times the area. So two times the one minus norm.s.dist. And the z-score is the test statistic. So in this case, our p-value is 0.117, which is larger than the significance. So again, the p-value method told us to fail to reject the null hypothesis. So with the p-value method and the traditional method, it's two ways of doing the same thing. Now, the, the, in the homework, you may be asked to, for, for, to do it both ways, but um, if the traditional method comparing the z-scores says fail to reject the null hypothesis, the p-value method is going to say always the same thing, fail to reject the null hypothesis. And now this is, so this decision to fail to reject the null hypothesis, and I mentioned this last week, this is, this is not the end of the problem. This is the, this is the step before the last step. The last step is to state the final conclusion. And there are four options 
for the final conclusion, you have to pick the right one. But again, these and this is not something you have to memorize. You go back to the chart, in this case, the one on the bottom right, stating the final conclusion. So question one, does the original claim contain the condition of equality? In this case, yes. The original claim was P equals 0 0.93. So that means we don't use this path. These two are out. <coughs> Next question. Do we reject the null hypothesis, yes or no? Well, in this case, yes. Oh, so, no. In this case, no, we did not reject the null hypothesis. So this one's out, and this would be your final conclusion. Even though the sample proportion was different than 0.93, it's not different enough. We can't reject the claim. So our final conclusion for this problem would be There is not sufficient evidence to reject the claim that P equals 0 0.93. So that would be, <clears throat> excuse me, that would be the final conclusion. Now, that just means the data is not strong enough or there's not enough data. So what if instead of 380 out of 400, what if we you know, kept that same proportion, but instead of 380 and 400, what if it was 380,000 and 400,000. <clears throat> well, you still have the same 95% for your sample proportion, but your test statistic is much, much larger now. So with more data, you could get to a point where you reject the null hypothesis. But in this case, the test is inconclusive because either we don't have enough sample data or that sample proportion is not extreme enough. Okay, so basically every single step in this problem, every single step start to finish, was already covered in section 8.1. What we're doing this week is just taking those individual components of the problem and just doing it together start to finish. The question starts with your claim. So the first thing you do is represent the claim symbolically. In this case, P equals 0 0.93. The very last thing you do is down here in the bottom right, state the final conclusion. So this is a full hypothesis test. All right, how are we doing? Does anyone have any questions? I have a question, but it's about the quiz. Okay. Should I ask it now? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, so I I didn't know like which formula to use, so that's gonna be question. Um, 
12 in the quiz. Well, first of all, which which quiz are you talking about? The, oh, the last one we just took, sorry, yeah. The chapter that, seven quiz? Chapter seven, yes. Okay, uh, which question was it? Uh, seven, um, sorry, I think it's not seven. Uh, just a second, um, 12. Okay, so the question is, what is the sample size, right? Yes. So you have to use the formula for sample size. Because I think there were two different formulas. There's always and... two formulas because we've always been covering two different statistics. We've been covering proportion and we've been covering mean. So in chapter seven, there were two formulas, one for each, just like now in chapter eight, there's two formulas, one for proportion, one for mean. So in this problem, you see the words mean, or you see the word mean, so you have to use, so this is telling you, you have to use the formula for sample size, but there's two of them, one for proportion, one for mean. And since the problem is about the mean, this is the one you have to use. Yeah, because that's what I thought I used the other one and still like I couldn't get the number right. So that's why I was like, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Because I think it was the one that, um, yeah, I think I have that formula, but still like it didn't work for me. So I don't know what, what I was doing wrong. <coughs> Well, uh, what formula did you use? Is it the one that says n equals, and then we say, um, it's like the z score, and then um, times the standard deviation divided by the error. I can't remember what the term is. And then to the square. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I had. Like we have to find like the z-score first with alpha divided by two times the standard deviation divided by the margin of error and then to the square, the whole thing. But like I said, I I couldn't get it right. So I, I, I thought maybe it wasn't the right formula. Um, no, that's that's definitely the right formula. Let me let me pull up my yes. So the formula that you you said was z score squared times standard deviation squared divided by margin of error squared, right? Yeah, I mean, it will be the same, I believe. Or you could say Z times standard deviation divided by E all squared. Yeah. Yeah, that's the correct formula. I, I can't answer your question. I, I, I can't tell you what you did wrong unless I see your work. So if you want, mm -hmm. you could email me your work or email me the Excel file. And once I see what you did, then I could figure out exactly what went wrong. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I will just like try it again and see if like I can get it right because maybe i did something wrong if that's the 
the formula for sure, then I know that probably I did something wrong, but I can just try figure it out again. Thank okay, you. Okay, yeah, yeah, but yeah, for sure. You you were you were definitely using the right formula. This is this yeah, is the right so I must have done something wrong. <laughs> Okay, uh, anything else? Any other questions about chapter seven, chapter eight, upcoming exam, extra credit project? Any questions at all? Okay, <clears throat> so uh, the last thing I wanna mention is the exam. The upcoming exam and that is due wednesday at midnight that is december 23rd wednesday at midnight so the exam will be posted it, it's well it's not available yet uh the homework for chapter eight is due sunday night at midnight and then at sunday sunday night at midnight then you'll see the exam pop up on my math lab. So you have from Sunday at midnight, you basically have Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. You have three days. At some point during those three days, you take the exam. Uh, I would recommend taking it maybe Wednesday or Tuesday afternoon uh, because we, we still have a couple more Zoom calls. Uh, we have our uh, our Zoom call this Friday at 10. And then we have a Zoom call next week, which is gonna be our last Zoom call of the semester. And both of those, both of those Zoom calls, we could use them as review sessions for the exam. So Friday at 10, Tuesday at seven, you're also, everyone is also welcome to come to the Monday 2.30 Zoom call uh, for my other section of this class. They, they do the exact same work, take the exact same test. Um, so you have three more opportunities for a, uh, to ask questions and do some review with me for the exam. Um, okay, so if there's no other questions, uh, we could go ahead and end the call. Good luck with uh, week 15, finishing up our, our final week of the semester. Hopefully this week won't be too bad, uh, you know, assuming that you made it through last week okay. okay All right, everyone. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a great week, everyone. Thank you.